another year God has graced us to see 2011 now what are you going to do different this year that you said you were going to do in 2010 I know you're sitting even some of you are making the black eyed peas and those collard greens and you're trying to get those ham hocks and all that good food in for the new year but I want you to take a moment matter of fact take a second it doesn't take that long to so grab a piece of paper and a pen and write something that you definitely want to do different this year and make it better well, for me, guess what I'm doing? I am going to be more positive and I'm gonna smile a little bit more this year. Sometimes things in life can get us down and we can be kind of depressed and in those mood swings where we don't wanna be bothered with people. I made a conscious decision, woman to woman, to be the best that God has called me to be and not to let anyone change my attitude or my personality because I love myself and I'm celebrating Tammy on this year of 2011. Now, what is this show going to be about on this morning? I pray that you are just embracing yourself for such a word and wisdom from great men. They're retired. Yes, and they are enjoying their lives. That's the way God wants us to be, to enjoy our lives. Who am I talking about? Let me take you on this journey really fast. His name is Mr. John Outlaw. He is a, a former assistant and retired police chief. Now, those are words, former, no longer. He's put in those years and he's able to be retired and enjoy his life. Also joining me is former, retired, Master Sergeant Cal Wiggins. Not only that, he's a minister of the gospel and he loves the Lord. Well, both of them love the Lord. You'll be able to tell just by their conversations on today. You're going to be blessed. They're real men doing phenomenal things in our community. More importantly, I tell you, they're going to grace this stage on today and give you tips of how you should look for when you're looking for a man, a man, not just any man, because women say all the time, oh, I really need a man. There are no good men out there. Yes, they are. You just don't know what to look for and you're settling for less. So after this commercial break, we're going to come back with our guests, Mr. John Outlaw and Mr. Cal Wiggins, and we're going to talk about the real men. What's the real deal? What's happening to our, not only our young black men, but men in general? Are you ready for this? Grab that coffee, grab that tea. Uh, you can get some donuts, that's fine. And enjoy Woman to Woman with me, Tammy Tubbs. I'll be right back. I love you. All right, I'm back. Good men are hard to find. That's what I hear so many women tell me. Tammy, your husband is perfect. Well, it's not that he's perfect. It's just that prayer works. Prayer changes things. I believe every man has flaws, but it's what you do as a woman to encourage him, uplift him, but more importantly, what you do to pray for him that you birth out exactly what's in his spirit. Now, I have assistant, former, retired, Mr. John Outlaw here with me today, and I'm going to move over to him because I want to hear these words of wisdom <laughs> that he has to say. It's like he's in such awe, like, oh my goodness, am I really doing a television show? <laughs> yes, sir, you are. I just have a simple question. What really defines, I guess you could say, a good man? How is a good man defined? Okay, uh, you know what? I'm going to have to go back. Go ahead. Take your time. Uh, <clears throat> From the day that you were born, you are shaped and molded by your parents. I was blessed to have my parents there for a while at least. And the things that they instilled in me about love, mm -hmm. passion for Christ, doing the right thing and being responsible is what makes a man wow. a real man. You know, you said one word that really stands out to me a lot, and that's being responsible, the responsibility. It's as if today our young men, it doesn't matter if they're black, white, Caucasian, whoever they are, it's like they're shifting their responsibility. Um, and they, they, they don't want to be responsible and take those actions that they need to, to be pillars in our community. They want to go around 
and put the, I guess, the responsibility on someone else. Do you have, I'm sure you've seen that quite a bit being um, with the police department. Can you share a little insight with us? Yes. Um, a lot of times uh, it depends on your surrounding. Mm -hmm. In life, you know, life can throw you a curve, you know, and let's be honest, uh, everyone is, don't have the gift to having the parents right there at home with them to see them develop, help them show what they need to do and all that stuff. Uh, there are so many things that distract our young men, and that's black and white. Um, society in general is a thing that is either negative or positive. Uh, our young men see different things on television, whether rapping, movies about violence, and all different types of things. Uh, some, the parents are loose. Yes. They don't keep a, a good eye on the children. It's not all parents, they're just some. Mm -hmm. And the thing that happened to them, they are being raised by the streets. Uh, and that's one of the number one things that we, we ran into as a police officer, uh, talking to the young men, trying to win their trust. Mm -hmm. uh, most young men think that uh, police officers are not their friends, uh, we're vindictive or whatever, you know, we are that mean person that tries to trick them and get them to confess to something that mm -hmm. will send them to jail forever. And see, you have to get <coughs> That's what the, you know. Yes. So the main thing that I, I tried to do when I was a, the police chief, assistant police chief was to, uh, to get a program started called the COP. Mm -hmm. That's Community Oriented Policing. That's taking it back to the way it used to be when we had one police officer. Mm -hmm. He walked the beat. He knew everybody. Uh, not only did he know you, he knew your parents, your grandparents, <laughs> and everybody. The same as it was, was in school. Yeah. Uh, that helps, and it, and it makes a big difference because if you're out in the community, the people start to trust you, parents trust you, and they, and they know that you will make the right decision yes, sir. when they are absent. Yes, sir, and that's so vital. Um, a lot of times we don't realize the environment that we do put our children in, you know, typically our black males, we have to make it more positive. A lot of times we allow them to watch extended hours of television, you know, un uncensored. I mean, it's like whatever you desire, it's like our television is raising our, basically our children. Yes. And um, I want to come over to you, um, Mr. Wiggins, in regards to a lot of times in our homes, it's like the mothers and the grandmothers are raising our young men. So. Yes. Um, if someone is listening right now and they're just like, my child is really rebellious. I don't know what to do. They don't trust the police officers. They believe that they're out to get them. Even if I were to go to um, Mr. Outlaw and say, can he become a part of your mentoring program? It's like, I don't want to do that. He don't mean me any good. What advice would you give a mother who's listening right now and it's just like, I don't know what to do. And she's blaming herself for the reason why her child is rebellious, the reason why her child may be in the streets or on drugs. What advice would you actually give um, this specific woman? Well, to that mother or those mothers that have rebellious teenagers, I would say first of all to make sure that they have a sound Christian lifestyle. Mm -hmm. you know, that is one of the most important ingredients when it comes to rearing children. You know, the scriptures tell us that children are to obey their parents, honor their father and their mother. Mm -hmm. And if a child sees his or her parent doing things that are not right, mm -hmm. and then they want to tell the child what to do and what not to do, the child is really confused. So the mother of the rebellious teenagers need to establish a set rule. Christ first yes. and always in the lives and then tell the children that this is what the scripture says. Uh, <clears throat> Ephesians 6 1 tells us you know that 
Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. But nowadays, you know, a lot of teenagers, boys or girls, they're going to be disrespectful. I understand, and because they are, that's the role that that mother or those mothers have to play in telling the child what God says about the situation. You, you can rebel, but God is going to repay. You know, uh, uh, the scripture tells us that Whatever we sow in this life, we're going to reap it. Yes, sir. And if that teenager or those teenagers want to be rebellious and disrespectful and not honoring their parents, they're going to get that in return. And the mothers shouldn't really worry about it. You know, you just give it over to the Lord. Don't try to force feed them. Just tell them what God says and, and say, Lord, they're in your hands now. Amen. Amen. I want to direct it to my sisters, my mothers that are watching me. Stop blaming yourself. You've done all that you can do. What you need to do is just stand, trust God, and know that everything is working out in your favor. You know, one of the things that I've learned with my father, um, with my three brothers, there are times when you set the example, you teach them, you tell them, but you have to let them go. Because in life, like Mr. Outlaw said, life is going to throw you a curveball. But if you train them up in the way that they should go, as Proverbs 22 and 6 um, simply declares, when they're older, they will not depart. If it's in there, it will come back to them. They will make a conscious decision of to do right or to do wrong, to go left or to go right. So I want to tell you on today, woman to woman, dry your eyes, wipe your tears. It's not your fault. Stop allowing the enemy to actually beat you up. Now I want to go back to um, the subject that I hear so often in regards to the fathers not being in the home. And I know personally, um, my mom sometimes would tell us something, and we would we would listen, but it's kind of like you keep going on about you know about your business. But if the father came in, it was something about the footsteps when he would come <laughs> into the house. Everybody is like at attention. You already know. I better do what I'm supposed to do. Now, she can say, did you clean your room up? I'm doing it, Mom. I'm getting to it. But when Dad comes in, it's just the footsteps. Everybody gets in line. So I believe, you know, that we have to go out there, mentor these young men, get them back in their place, teach them and tell them how they're supposed to be a father, how they're supposed to be um, a daddy, even, you know, because you can father a child, you know, a seed, you father a child. That's my child. But it takes a real man to actually, you know, be a daddy. So, um, Mr. Al, I want you to just discuss, even with your two sons, and I know you're very proud of them. I, I know you are. Even when I saw Travis got drafted the first thing, I was like, that's my little brother. <laughs> you know, that was because <coughs> when you grow up, you grow up in a community. Everybody knows everybody. That's right. So I want you just to discuss the importance of a father in, a, in the home and how it does influence sons, the boys in the home. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, <laughs> there is no quick fix way to show a child that you love them, mm -hmm. you know, unconditionally. But I think the first thing as a, as a man is you, you got to let the child, let the young man know that you love him. You can't be afraid to tell them that you love them. That's and, and I want to put this out to the audience, too, in reference to mothers who are raising sons. That does not mean that you cannot raise your son because I was raised by my mother. My father and, and mother split up uh, at a, not a, when I was at not an early age, but maybe six or eight. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was no, you know, that's no excuse. My mother instilled in me what was right, what was wrong. Uh, they taught me about, you know, respecting your sisters, uh, respecting your parents, mm -hmm. doing the things that it, it takes to succeed. I always putting in me a drive, a drive to succeed, to advance. Don't settle for anything. St always step up your game. Amen. Keep stepping up over and over and over. And the same way, my grandmother, who is a very spiritual, was a very spiritual woman, said, as you step up in life, in your employment, you step up in faith. Each step that you take, you thank the Lord for